Hi there. So here we're going to look at the practice of conducting an analysis of covariance. First of all I'm going to import the data set on the bacillus scores of patients before and after treatment. So here's the text file, it's on my J drive, here I am here, and what we have is the leprosy data. I'll open it here and uh, import it so uh, here it is. So we've got a list of patients with uh, three different types of drug. Uh, ten patients were given one drug, another ten a second and ten a third and here is their bacillus score uh, before treatment and here is their bacillus score after treatment. So the first thing to do here is to plot the graph and here we are running the uh, graph and here we can see that the bacillus score after does seem to be related to the bacillus score of the patients uh, before treatment although it's unclear whether the drug has uh, any uh, strong effect. Now let's fit a model to understand this relationship and to begin with we're going to be fitting the classical a simple analysis of covariance model. So here what we have is the fit of a linear model with back after as our dependent variable, back before as our continuous predictor and the type of treatment uh, is treated as a factor. One, two or three are not used as numbers but as categorical levels. After fitting the model, we can look at the breakdown in terms of an analysis of variance. And what we can see is that there's a highly significant effect of back before on back after, and yet there is no significant relationship uh, between the treatment and back after once you control for back before. You'll remember that uh, we are conducting uh, by default a type 1 sum of squares so we are controlling for back before as we should when looking at the effect of the treatment. Let's have a look at the coefficients uh, that can be estimated from fitting the model. You'll see that we have an intercept here, we have a gradient for back before and then we have adjustments for the different factors. You'll notice that uh, factor 1 also the factor with level 1 is missing and that's because uh, it's uh, subsumed within uh, that coefficient for the intercept. That's the way uh, the uh, default contrasts have been set. Okay, uh, let's move on and fit those lines to the data. So first of all we can fit the first treatment, then the second and the third to uh, data simply by drawing lines with those estimated coefficients and you'll notice that the fitted lines in these cases are all uh, assumed to be parallel and that they have a common gradient of 0 0.8830. Now uh, just for completeness sake I'd like to conduct a type 3 sum of squares. Of course there's uh, a number of ways to do this. We can uh, change the order and simply look at the bottom listed predictor in each case or we can uh, actually call up the library car which is what I'm doing and then I'm calling up capital A ANOVA and setting the type 3 sum of squares within that for our individual model that we've just fitted, model 1. And here we come to very much the same conclusion. Now back before uh, is uh, uh, investigated but we're controlling at the same time and statistically eliminating the uh, effect of the treatment when we're looking at back before and likewise for treatment we're controlling for back before and uh, the conclusions are the same. Back before has a very strong influence on back after uh, so if you start uh, with a high score you typically ending with a high score too uh, but the treatment has uh, no significant effect on the uh, back after. Now let's actually uh, draw out the uh, residual plots just so that we can check the uh, underlying assumptions of the fit of our uh, GLM. And to do that I'm actually going to plot uh, for simplicity uh, 
both of the individual graphs on the same point. So what I'm going to be doing is setting up a one row by two column matrix of plots uh, using the uh, par graphical command. Now I'm simply going to plot these graphs out. So there is the first in which we examine the uh, residuals with regard to homogeneity of variance. And there is the second in which we examine the normality. And we can see that uh, approximately uh, these residuals do indeed uh, tend to follow a normal distribution and that the QQ plot is approximately a straight line. Now I'd like to go on and ask what would the model look like if we actually fitted a model which had a gradient which could potentially differ for different levels of the treatment. You'll remember the classical Ankava assumes parallel lines such that the gradients are all the same, uh, but it is possible to fit a more sophisticated model in which uh, the gradients differ, potentially at least, uh, between treatments. So here is this model uh, here as we list it out. What we have here is uh, back after uh, is uh, now uh, going to be fitted with respect to not just the main effects but also uh, an interaction between back before and the treatment. By specifying the interaction, the default assumption is that the main effects, i.e. back before and the treatment, will also separately be considered. Now let's have a look at the analysis of variance for uh, this uh, second model. And this is what it looks like. Uh, here, uh, there is no evidence of a significant interaction uh, between back before and treatment, i.e. there is no evidence uh, to reject the null hypothesis that the gradients of those relationships uh, do not differ between the different levels of the treatment. There's also no evidence to reject the null hypothesis that the treatment has no effect on the back after score. And uh, of course that is bearing in mind that using this type 1 sum of squares we are uh, controlling for back before. And finally uh, we see yet again a strong relationship on back before in influencing the uh, back after. Let's have a look at the coefficients though. And uh, here are the coefficients. Uh, uh, you'll notice not only do we have a baseline uh, gradient here, uh, but with this interaction uh, these different values uh, will help shape the overall gradient according to the treatment level considered. Now let's uh, simply plot out the uh, overall graph again, but this time I'm actually going to uh, be highlighting and fitting the models with different gradients rather than the same, and uh, this is what it looks like uh, here when we fit this model. The code for graphics is a little bit cumbersome, so it's perhaps easiest to uh, view it directly uh, from the web page.